Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. It's our third installment of the Strategic Financing Services four-part summer series. Today, we're going to be talking about strategic planning, but taking that plan and putting it into action. So we're going to start with um, a brief introduction, and then we'll get diving right in. Uh, so our speakers today are LaShawn Taylor, um, myself, Laurel Tinsley, and Jason Callahan. We'll each introduce ourselves as we get started on our materials later on. So um, I'm Laurel Tinsley. I'm the Managing Director of Strategic Financing Services here at Cherry Beckert. We have been putting on a summer series talking about best practices in community development, taking ideas and putting them into action. And today I'm really excited to be sharing with you some steps because I think um, we are uh, helping you all think through getting yourself out there into the community. And that's one of the passions I have is serving the communities. So um, like I mentioned, we'll have Jason um, introduce himself a little bit later and we'll kick it over to LaShawn as she um, okay, takes over in the next section. So I'm just gonna dive right in and talk about our learning objectives. Last year, we had a four-part series and one of our sessions was talking about having to put this plan into place. And so we're building on those tools that we gave you last year, which is once you have a plan, how do you put that plan into action? How do you take those best practices that other people have developed over time and take your plan from the page um, into action in the community? We're going to help you identify a few um, things that will get roadblocks out of your way. One, one of the things that often help, holds people back is money, trying to get the uh, resources you need to put your plan into place. You have great ideas, but how do you get the resources to help you put those into action? Um, and then uh, we'll talk about some new market tax credit basics. So as you all know, lots of our sessions have a little bit to do with new market. So we won't cover the new market tax credit program in too big a detail, but if you have uh, questions after our, our slides today, we have several more um, presentations on new market basics um, and going beyond basics to making projects great. So one of the things um, that really comes to mind is taking that strategic lens, um, thinking about the future. That's, that's really exciting, getting into the idea of what is it you are doing? What is it you've done well? What is it you should do differently? And where do you want to grow? So we're gonna lay just a little bit of foundation on that, and then we'll turn it over to LaShawn to talk about um, putting that into play. But just wanted to make sure that for those of you who didn't see our session last year, that we had a few basics in mind. So strategic planning really should involve multiple steps, but thinking about um, those doing a SWOT analysis or some other form of really deep dive into your organization, thinking about what do you want to accomplish? What are you doing well as far as your outcomes? And what do you really feel like hasn't been going well for you? Identifying what may be roadblocks. Are you finding that you don't have the right partners? Do you not have the right team members on your team or external resources to help you get where you want to go? Um, really getting the whole organization involved in that. There's a lot of times leaders need to think through that um, strategically. But if you want to really go somewhere, you have to involve the whole team in that process at some point to make sure that everybody's on the same page and they understand how their work really connects into the bigger organizational framework. So uh, again, um, covered in a lot more detail last year, but core elements of a strategic plan really involve thinking about your mission, vision, and values. Who are you as an organization? What have you done in the past? What's really important to you? What do you wanna make sure you don't leave off the page? Are there ways you really want to grow? Are you thinking to yourself, we've been an organization that does ABC and we really need to change what we're doing because the community has asked for it, because there's a need we have identified, because um, you know we've got a new talent on our team or because we want to meet a, a need that we've identified. Again, thinking about that in organizational framework of who do you have on your team? It's not just who comes to work every day. Sometimes it's who are your external resources? Have you identified people in the community? Have you identified uh, service providers? Do you need a lawyer? Do you need an accountant? Do you need a consultant to help you fill a gap within your team? So looking at who your team is and how you can better um, use all those resources and add to those resources as needed. Doing a review of what's out there in the market and what you're doing in the market, but also um, what is needed. So again, don't recreate the wheel if somebody down the road is is 
doing some great work in a lending space, you don't need to duplicate their efforts. But if you find there's a gap in your economy, you need that smaller tier lending or you need some uh, larger uh, lending to make what uh, the community's goals really come to life. Think about what's missing and, and frankly, again, uh, how does that fit within your organization? Is that something you all should be doing or is that something you should partner with others to do? Um, people talk about the BHAG, having a big, hairy, audacious goal. Um, sometimes that's great uh, and thinking about that in a multi-year process, but then think about uh, how does that break down into smaller elements? How are we going to take that big, big plan and make it into more actionable bite-sized pieces? Again, laying out from that uh, multi-year step to what is going to be today, what's going to be in three years, what's going to be in five. And then what are the benchmarks? How do you know um, what you need to be doing? What are you going to be measuring over time to see if you've made progress towards that goal? So now we've laid the foundation again of what strategic planning should entail. We're going to start off with a polling question. I'd like to give people a few minutes to make sure they're settled before we kick this off. The first one is, what are your learning objectives for today? So really set your foundation today. What are you trying to get out of this? And if we have not um, ca captured what you're looking for, please drop that in the chat. Um, hopefully you are here for steps to implement a strategic plan. Uh, that's a great one. That's what we're gonna cover a lot today. Maybe you're looking at financial community development projects and you wanna really understand how you can bring financing to your community. Perhaps you're thinking about new markets and how that fits your, for your organization, or maybe you're here for CPE credit, which is uh, also just a perfectly great reason to be here, but um, drop in the chat, what, uh, or sorry, drop in your polling questions, which one is uh, your main goal today? And I don't see any questions. Uh, so hopefully we're, we've got everybody's results. So great. The, we're pretty evenly split um, between people here who want to get CPE credit and people who want to figure out how to implement their strategic plan. So those are great uh, reasons to be here. So we'll keep moving on. And I'm going to move this to uh, over to LaShawn Taylor. She's going to introduce herself a little bit and take it from here. Thank you, Laurel. Um, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're calling from. Um, again, my name is LaShawn Taylor and I'm a manager here with our strategic financing services team. I'm excited to be here today to be able to dive in a little bit deeper into talking about what are some models for how you wanna go about uh, creating a strategic plan. There are a lot of different models out there, a lot of different guides that you can use. And today we just wanna highlight uh, one for you that might be a good example for you as you're thinking about embarking on a community development strategy for your organization. And so as you start the strategic planning process, there are some fundamental questions that you wanna be able to ask yourself as you begin the process. Um, as Laurel mentioned, it is a process where you wanna be able to take stock of where your organization currently is, where you'd like your organization to be as it aligns with your vision and mission, and then also taking a look at what are the resources that you need to be able to move you from where you currently are to where you'd like to go. And then lastly, being able to make sure that you're monitoring your progress as you move through the different stages of your strategic plan. So there are a lot of different models that exist for a strategic plan, and we wanted to just present one for you today as an option as you're moving through thinking about developing a new strategy as a community development entity. And so this model here is the ABCDE model. A stands for assessment, B for baseline, C for components, D for down to specifics, and E for evaluate. And you'll notice at the top that those uh, fundamental questions that we just saw on the last slide actually connect to one of the different phases of this model. Um, and so if you're looking at where you are now and taking stock of where your organization currently sits, this is where you want to sit as far as conducting the assessment and baseline components of your organization. So as Laurel mentioned, this is um, in the assessment phase, this is where you wanna start to take that kind of macro view of your organization, performing those environmental scans where you can really take a step back and analyze all the different aspects of your organization. You wanna be able to gather a lot of background information at this stage of the planning process. Um, and being able to conduct a SWOT analysis is one of the great practices for being able to assess the opportunities that exist for your organization. Maybe you wanna think about how you can mitigate any risks that may arise. And so at that assessment stage, you're really doing that foundational information gathering for yourself. 
And then as you move into that baseline phase, this is where you start to perform some of those metrics for yourself. So now that you've gathered that background information, where does your organization sit situationally? Where have you been in the past? What is your present standing? And then where do you like to be in the future? And then also you wanna be able to, to note any significant issues that your organization has faced historically. Those are really important to be able to look into as you're moving into a new phase of your organization's future. You also wanna make sure that you have the right capacity to be able to take on this new strategy. And really you wanna make sure that does this strategy align with where you'd like to go? And then lastly, at this baseline phase, as you're conducting this analysis, this is where you wanna be able to identify what are those gaps that exist for your organization? Um, is it in resources financially? Is it in staff capacity? Um, this is where you wanna be able to say, we need to find out what we need to do to go from point A to point B. And then next, that's where you start to really dig into your plan. So you start looking at the different components of your organization, and this is where you lay out those key um, steps in your um, plan. So you wanna take a look at your mission and vision and values. Do those still align with where you'd like to go in the future? And then this is where you get down to looking at those specific goals, or objectives that you want to accomplish as a community development organization. And once you've identified those components, this is where you get to the really good part of the planning phase where you get really down to those specifics. So you start asking yourself, how are we going to accomplish this strategy? What are we going to do as far as assessing what our performance is going to look like? Um, what are those targets and those standards that we're trying to meet as an organization? Are there particular initiatives or projects that we're thinking about targeting that are essential for us to carry out this strategy? And really what we're talking about at this stage is conducting an action plan, putting pen to paper and really laying out all the steps that are needed for you to be able to accomplish this new strategy. And then lastly, which is extremely important is the evaluation stage. So how are you monitoring your progress as you move through this different strategy and these different phases that you decided to enact on? Um, this is where you wanna establish some key performance management tools and strategies. You wanna make sure that you really outline um, a review process for your organization and bring in those key players that are gonna help you manage that process. You also wanna be able to say at this stage, do we need to make any adjustments to our plans, any adjustments to our strategies? And then also really thinking about how you gather and collect feedback and plan for your next steps. And this feedback gathering is really important at this stage because you wanna make sure you have a very inclusive um, strategy for this where you're contacting the right stakeholders, staff internally, or any external stakeholders that are key for your strategy and being able to um, be successful in it. So it's just one strategy that exists for how you wanna go about conducting a strategic planning process. Um, there are many that exist, and no matter which strategy that you choose to use, there are some best practices for how you wanna go about implementing that strategy. And so the first is making sure that you have cl clear communication with your employees and staff, being very transparent about why you're moving in this direction and what it means for them. Also being able to make sure that their job roles align with the strategy that you have. You also wanna make sure that you establish some realistic timelines for how you're going to monitor your progress at this stage. And then lastly, while it is important to be innovative and creative in this space, you wanna make sure that you balance that desire and need for change and innovation with what is realistically within your control and within the capacity of your organization. So now that we've covered kind of the meat of looking at a strategic planning process and what it entails and being able to carry out that process, um, I know many of you are here thinking, okay, now that I've gotten a plan in place, how am I gonna fund this new strategy that we're talking about? And so there are a lot of different ways that you can capitalize your organization, particularly as a CDFI or through the CDFI funds programs. And we do wanna highlight a few of those. Uh, but first we just wanna make sure that everyone has a good understanding of what a CDFI is. We've been saying this acronym. And so a CDFI, if you are not familiar, is a community development financing, financial institution. And these institutions have a primary mission of serving low income communities through their financial products and services. And so CDFIs can take many forms. They can be banks, credit unions, microloan funds. There are a lot of different ways that organizations um, organize themselves to be a CDFI. And so as this entity, you're going to start thinking about, well, maybe a CDFI is not right for me. I'm thinking about how my organization just wants to get into this space. 
And there are a lot of ways that organizations can start participating in the community lending and investing space. And so again, one of those is becoming a certified CDFI, which um, in the next few slides, we'll talk about what those eligibility requirements are. Uh, but let's say that maybe you don't want to uh, become a CDFI. There are other ways that you can still participate in this community space. That is, maybe you want to think about forming an entity that makes investments in the forms of loans or grants, or perhaps you're thinking about establishing a loan fund, or maybe you'd like to do more in terms of partnerships. So maybe you'll partner with local CDFIs or other organizations that are already participating in the economic development space. And so if you are thinking about becoming a CDFI, there are some eligibility requirements um, that are necessary for you to receive certification. The first is that you have to be a legal entity at the time of submitting your application. And you do have to have a primary mission of promoting community development as the anchor of your organization. And again, you do have to be a financing entity. So again, that can take shape in many different forms, whether you're thinking about a loan fund or maybe you're a bank or a credit union. You also have to provide in conjunction with those financing activities, some sort of educational or development service um, for the members of the community that you're serving. You also have to have um, a primary mission of serving one or more of the target markets that are deemed eligible by the CDFI fund. And you also have to make sure that your boards maintain accountability to those defined target markets. And then lastly, you cannot be a government entity nor under the control of a government entity when you are submitting your application. However, this provision does not apply for Native American tribes that are under a tribal government. And so with all the eligibility requirements, you're probably thinking to myself, okay, why would I want to take advantage of the CDFI funds activities or why would I wanna get certified? And so yes, you have to go through this application process to be certified. And there is an annual requirement to make sure that you maintain compliance as a CDFI. But once you've gone through that process, you are eligible to apply for many of the awards and participate in a lot of the programs that exist through the CDFI fund. And we will talk about what some of those programs are. Um, so there are, again, a lot of different ways that you can capitalize your organization as you're thinking about embarking on a community development strategy. Again, the CDFI fund has a ton of programs and, and, reward, and awards that you could potentially apply for. And we will talk about those in the next couple of slides. Um, but there are additional resources that are available for you if you're thinking about capitalizing your organization. Um, so the first obviously would be some budget or appropriations that exist through Congress on an annual basis for organizations that wanna participate in community development or economic development. Um, philanthropic organizations are another good resource. Perhaps you're thinking about foundations that may wanna capitalize your organization through um, direct programs that connect to community development or maybe through just some general operating funds that you can utilize on your own to fund that strategy. There's also traditional bank debt if you're interested in going that route. Perhaps you're thinking about targeting specific individuals that have a history of um, lending in the space, or maybe you have good um, prior relationships with those individuals, or perhaps you wanna start forming some industry partnerships with organizations that are already participating in the space and have a good track record of how they previously funded these um, strategies and participated in economic development. But if you are interested in participating in some of the CDFI fund uh, grant programs, there are a lot of programs that exist. Um, we won't talk about all of them today. However, we will highlight a few. Um, we'll talk about the financial and technical assistance programs, the capital magnet fund, and then my colleague Jason is going to go uh, a little bit in more depth of talking about the new market tax credits program. So the CDFI fund grant program, so there are a few that we want to highlight um, that are really great opportunities for you if you're thinking about establishing some early opportunities to capitalize your organization. So the first would be the technical assistance grant program. So this program is for those new um, CDFIs or emerging CDFIs um, that are interested in getting some capital to start their organization's lending platforms, or maybe you're looking to increase your staff capacity, um, or maybe you're looking to utilize those funds to help you get ready for the CDFI certification process. Um, a lot of the funds for the technical assistance program have been used for capacity development. Maybe you're thinking about purchasing equipment that's necessary for your organization. Perhaps you're thinking about hiring consultants or contracting services. 
um, that can help you prepare for the CDFI certification process. This is actually something that Cherry Becker has a lot of experience in and helping organizations go through that process. Or maybe you're looking to think about training your board members or staff members, or maybe even utilizing it to pay salary or benefits. So it's a really flexible opportunity for your organization to take advantage of this. And with the technical assistance program, it's important to note that if you apply for these funds, you do have to showcase that within three years, you have the ability to actually obtain CDFI certification. So there is a three-year grace period where you can utilize these funds to help build up your capacity to then submit an application. You don't have to take the three years. You can apply sooner if you feel like your organization is ready, but that is the grace period that you are given. Next, we have the financial assistance program. So the financial assistance program is for organizations that have already received CDFI certification and are just looking for some additional funds to help capitalize their loan funds or products. Um, and this is a really useful um, resource for those organizations because they're looking to kind of add on. And so the financial assistance uh, program does have a match requirement and those match funds cannot come from a, a government source. You do need to have some other form of non-federal funds that you can use um, as a match requirement. And you can utilize these awards for, again, any lending capital, um, capital reserves, operations, or anything that's important uh, for development services for your organization. And then lastly, the Capital Magnet Fund. So the Capital Magnet Fund is a program that is available for CDFIs. Um, it's also available for qualified nonprofit housing organizations who have a primary purpose of making sure that they wanna invest in the affordable housing space. Um, and so with the Capital Magnet Fund, you can do things like support your financing tools um, through loan guarantees. And the really great thing about the Capital Magnet Fund is that you can utilize these federal dollars as a way as a subsidy to really try to invite and attract those private investors into your affordable housing um, project. And so really the goal of this fund, again, is kind of be that um, attractive piece so that if you are an affordable housing developer, this is a great program for you to be able to get some sort of subsidy to be able to help you as you're thinking about other capital uh, capital strategies to fund um, your programs. And so no matter what strategy you use to capitalize your organization as you're looking to embark on this community development strategy, there are some um, key understandings that you might wanna have as you're thinking about communicating with funders, whether they're new or, or funders that you already have a previous um, history with. Um, but as you're thinking about moving into this space and trying to seek funds for your organization, you wanna make sure that you take in a stock of all the revenue considerations for the year. So that's being able to make a list of all confirmed or even potential sources of revenue that exists for the upcoming year. And that way taking stock will allow you to be able to identify any funding gaps that exist. And this is where you really wanna be able to move forward in establishing a financial narrative for yourself that you can communicate to funders about why these necessary, why the funds are necessary um, for you to be able to move forward with your strategy. And as you're thinking about targeting different funders, whether it's going through a CDFI program or again, any of those other funders um, that may wanna participate in the economic development space, you do wanna make sure that you've taken a stock of, again, how aligned are you with their track record of funding? Um, what types of projects have they funded in the past? Are you not a community, I mean, excuse me, are you not a housing organization, but maybe the funder that you're looking to um, talk to primarily funds, right? So that wouldn't be in alignment with what they funded in the past. Um, thinking about what amounts have they historically awarded? Does that fit with thinking about what are the gaps that exist for your organization as far as those financing resources? Um, and also thinking about, is that the right funder to target? A lot of times organizations may think, well, maybe they don't get us to our full goal, but it'll get us there a little bit. And sometimes um, you'll think about that, but however, it may not be the right organization, it may not be the right funding for you, because then you wanna think about what is the capacity gonna be needed to manage this program, particularly if it is a federal uh, source of funds. And then lastly, um, what is your relationship with the funder? Relationships is a big uh, component in this space. And so being able to talk to those funders that you have a good relationship with just also gets you into a better place to be able to potentially get the funds that's needed for your organization. So we are at our second polling question. And so we've talked a little bit about uh, the strategies for implement, implementing a community development strategies, also looking at some of the resources that exist when talking about capitalizing your organization. 
Um, so as we've talked about this, and maybe you've thought about this yourselves um, in your own conversations with your leadership team, how is your organization considering participating in community lending and investing? Um, so maybe you've thought maybe forming a CDFI or a CDE is right for us. Um, or perhaps you're thinking, well, maybe that's not the right space, but we would like to be an entity that makes loans that are out sit outside of the new market tax credits program. Uh, maybe you're thinking about establishing a loan fund as a way to get into the space, or perhaps you're not quite there and you're thinking we're still exploring our options. Um, so we are interested to hear kind of how you all are thinking about participating in this space. All right, so it looks like we are overwhelmingly still thinking about it, and that is a great place to be. Again, we just touched on a few of the opportunities, and it's really important, and you all obviously are doing this, wanting to gather as much information as possible, which is, again, the right part of that strategic planning process, right? Gathering all background info and as much as information as possible. Um, so that's um, really great, because as we move into this next um, phase, um, of the presentation, my colleague Jason is going to talk a little bit more about one particular program, which is the new market tax credits, and how that could potentially be an option for you all that are thinking about moving into the space. So, Jason, the floor is yours. Thanks, LaShawn. Yeah, that that was great. You know, I think capitalization is the number one item we hear from community development corporations, entities, CDFIs. Uh, given the current rate environment, um, finding ways and new and exciting ways to um, get capital in the door and um, that they can deploy. You know, I think uh, most of the people we talk to seem to um, have projects in the community ready to go, um, but they just can't find the capital uh, to, to make that happen. So um, exploring those items with the CDFI fund is really huge. Um, you know, I think the other thing from your presentation, LaShawn, sorry, I loved your presentation. Um, is, is the, the technical assistance and financial assistance grants, you know, the timing of that program. We helped a couple of people um, apply for those over uh, last winter, uh, early early spring. And, um, you know, I think we should be getting announcements on those fairly soon. So looking forward for those announcements to come out from the CDFI fund here uh, shortly. So uh, sorry, I uh, kind of went off on a tangent there. My name is Jason Callahan. I'm the senior manager um, as part of the strategic financing services team, specifically focused on uh, compliance and asset management for community development entities and CDFIs around uh, working with them on their policies and procedures, um, primarily focused on the new market tax credit program, but also working in the CDFI lending space as well. Um, so we're going to sh shift focus, as LaShawn said, a little bit here and go a little bit more in depth about the new market tax credit, or I'll call it the NMTC program. Lots of acronyms, as you've probably heard. I think um, uh, specifically, we're going to focus on kind of where different organizations might find ways into the new market program uh, as part of kind of a broader strategy. So what we're not going to do at Laurel kind of mentioned at the top, we're not going to dive into all the nuances of the new market tax credit program, though I would be happy to kind of uh, nerd out with you anytime um, uh, one on one and go through the program. It's something that um, I've been working in for for 12 plus years now. And so really passionate about it. Would love to kind of go in more depth or you can find stuff on our um, YouTube channel as well. We've done plenty of presentations on that, but happy to answer questions after the fact as well. So so um, like I said, most people have probably heard of the NMTC program or maybe you've been involved in a project of some kind uh, with the program in some different capacity. But for those of you that haven't, um, I'm going to give some program highlights and kind of current updates on the program. But no, if you uh, have done uh, our other events, dive more deeply into all of this. So again, just feel free to kind of send me a message or check out our YouTube channel and uh, we can direct you in the right uh, direction. So the New Market Tax Credit Program has a goal of kind of stimulating regeneration of the low income and impoverished communities across the United States. Uh, the program is unique. Um, for the CDFI fund programs and that you do not need to be a CDFI in order to apply for new market tax credit allocation. You do, however, need to be a certified community development entity or a CDE is what we'll call it uh, going forward. Um, so the CDEs are the ones that then apply for the allocation of tax credits from the CDFI fund uh, in, in what is a very competitive process. And then um, they act as an interme intermediary of sorts uh, and pair that allocation uh, with qualified active low-income community businesses, all it be. Uh, so last year, the CDFI fund uh, awarded $5 billion in allocation to 102 of 197 applicants. So 
uh, as you can see, it is a very competitive process to to get that that allocation. Um, so we're eagerly awaiting the, the next announcement of another $5 billion award. We're expecting that here in the fall, uh, early fall of 2024. Um, and then that will also likely kick off the next um, application cycle for, for new market tax credits. So CDEs um, can be awarded in the next cycle as well. Uh, the next cycle will be what we call a double round or um, the next, so the next two rounds of allocation authority. Uh, so it'll pair together to be a $10 billion round of allocation. Um, so that's really exciting in our industry. Um, that'll be announced. The, so the people that apply for that will be announced, um, uh, will apply and probably have a due date of first quarter of 2025 with um, announcements in later 2025 for that $10 billion round. Okay, so let's dive a bit deeper Um into what these CDEs uh, kind of entail, kind of where who might fall into that category of becoming a community developer. Um, so CDEs are really the in intermediaries, like I talked about with the CDFI fund. Um, CDFI fund is essentially saying, you know, we have all these community entities out there. We've got this tax credit allocation. How do we decide who gets the money? Well, let's just use those community uh, development entities throughout the country and rely on their kind of local expertise to get that money out the door. So uh, let's let them make the decisions on whom should get the lucrative capital that we're, we're doling out in the low-income communities. And so the CDEs act as that intermediary and they, they'll pair up with the most deserving projects with the tax credit investors. So generally banks or tax credit investors, they've got the tax liability to utilize the credits um, and they've got other uh, needs that we'll talk about here in a little bit. So, so we have another competitive system working then, right? So we've got the first system where community development entities, um, they'll apply for the tax credit allocation. And then you've got the underlying businesses who are providing that economic uh, benefit in the communities, uh, trying to go to those community development entities and say, hey, look at my project. These are the great benefits. This is why you should provide that allocation of capital to, to my project. So we've got those two competitive forces kind of working at play here. Um, so the CDFI fund is going to provide allocation on the competitive basis like we talked about. Um, and CDEs that have a, a track record of raising that capital and equity and getting projects done in low-income communities are the ones they're looking for. So if you're thinking about becoming a CDE, I would caution that in order to win one of these really competitive allocations, you need to have a track record of activity um, in, in your community and in kind of the projects that you would um, be looking to fund with the new market tax credit. Um, so, so beyond that, you need to have relationships with debt and equity investors and be able to show those track, really track those economic benefits that the CDFI fund ultimately wants to report upon. Uh, so the economic benefits coming from the program kind of are threefold, um, and we'll kind of go through this in more detail. But so the one, we've got the CDE who's applying for that allocation, you know, uh, beyond kind of the CDE's ability to to um, allocate those tax credits and that tax credit equity to projects that they would like to, to allocate it to. They're also going to be able to charge um, fees for that allocation. So they've gone through this competitive process, they've got the allocation, and now they, they are going to get a piece of that tax credit equity. And, and that fee is um, looked at as, as by the CDFI fund as something that we can, those CDEs can really utilize to further their own projects and in, in different things. And that's really revenue and another capitalization source to the community development entities. So, so the fees come into play there for the CDEs. Um, it comes in tax credit equity support the program. Uh, the quality B is going to receive that ultimate chunk of tax credit equity to finance the project. And we'll talk about a little bit of what that looks like here in a little bit. Uh, and then you've got the investor, the banks that we were talking about. They're going to receive the ulti ultimately receive the tax credits as their primary benefit. Um, potentially, they've got CRA credit that this would apply for as well, or some other sort of economic program that they need to to check boxes for. So. Um, credits are generally purchased at around 80 cents on the dollar right now. And so those charges with uh, changes that, you know, that changes a lot with the tax code and other economic benefits and things like that. Um, but ultimately, uh, it's a, you know, 80 cents on the dollar is pretty luc lucrative for uh, the investors. All right. So here we have an illustration of kind of how the money um, is going to flow and the tax credits are going to flow through. I'm going to kind of move through this. Um, 
a little bit quickly. So like I said, uh, it's a lot going on here. Um, I don't want to um, overwhelm anybody. And this is not a tax, uh, new market tax credit specific presentation. So we have an illustration here of the, uh, the money and the tax credits. Again, um, we can start at the bottom here. Um, wanted to highlight the three beneficiaries essentially and where that money's coming in. So at the bottom here, we have uh, have those underlying businesses who are ultimately going to receive the tax credit equity to help their capital stack. Uh, in the middle, we have those community development entities we were talking about. Um, and then in the top right, we have the investors who, again, the primary economic driver is the receipt of those new market tax credits. So the, you can see in the middle there, the community development entity um, really is not um, charged with bringing capital to this equation. They are they get the allocation of tax credits from the CDFI fund, and then the qualified businesses are going to come with, you know, seventy percent of their capital stack, uh, and pair that with new market tax credits to meet the additional thirty percent need. And so we'll talk about that gets a little bit lower with legal costs and things like that. Um, but as you can see, the, the CDE is really um, responsible for um, making sure that the benefits get to the most needed low-income communities and the best projects in those low-income communities. Um, and then I mentioned the banks at the top, you know, they're getting, they're getting their tax credits, um, but they definitely have Community Reinvestment Act requirements. Um, they have, they've agreed to various internal commitments that we see more and more now um, where uh, they are invest, required to invest in underserved communities that are um, traditionally capital deprived. So, Banks are often looking for projects that are investing in these these low income areas, and um, the bank can can benefit in multiple ways from those. So, it's taking a step back and looking at the underlying projects, you know, what is an attractive project to a community development entity? What's going to what's going to win um, that alloc that coveted allocation? Well, here are some of the items. Um, but I would caution that each of the CDEs that has won uh, tax credit allocation has signed on to an allocation agreement. And in their application, they've kind of laid out with the CDFI fund how they're going to deploy their investments. So um, something that is attractive to one CDE might not be as attractive to another. Um, I think this is really where um, seeking out counsel for your project makes a lot of sense. Um, you can really... Um, look at a lot of different CDEs to try and find that allocation, um, but knowing which ones to go to uh, right off the bat is, is a huge benefit. So, um, so here we go. So we've got significant impacts. So generally speaking, significant community impacts is gonna be one of the, the big drivers, things like job creation, quality jobs, providing some needed service in the community. Um, if you can, you know, demonstrate that your community is, um, you know, needs a grocery store, needs a federally, uh, funded health care facility. Um, those are the different things that um, might interest a CDE, um, among various other things. You know, um, community impacts are going to vary by locality, and and um, that's why we, the CDFI fund really leans on the community development entities to, to help um, advise them on where these projects should go. Um, Non-metro, while, while pen, plenty of um, the new market tax credit funds are going to, to metro deals, uh, it's harder and harder to find deals in rural and non-metro communities. So those projects become a little bit more attractive to CDEs that can say we, we're going to do projects in those rural communities. It's not that most of the projects um, are getting uh, or that are rural are getting awards or anything like that, but it does help for some CDEs. Uh, same thing with underserved states. So the CDFI fund wants to make sure that based on low-income populations per capita that each each state is getting benefits of the program. Uh, CDEs will also be looking for a complete capital stack. So kind of as we talked about, and we'll get into a little bit more here, uh, the capital stack is something that um, you're not going to want to come to a new market transaction with, with no funds ready to go. Um, the NMTC program is really that last step of financing that can kind of get, get projects to the end, end goal. Okay, so as I uh, kind of alluded to earlier, uh, the the NMC program is not designed to fully fund a project. 
Generally, we say 15 to 20 percent of project costs can come from that tax credit equity piece. Um, so projects that have much of their funding lined up are going to be more attractive to the CDEs. You know, it doesn't mean that you need to have, you know, 90 percent of your funds in a, in a cash account somewhere. Uh, usually we see these projects coming to new markets with four or five grant sources and a loan and capital and, and equity and different things. Um, so we, we um, the NMC program is flexible in that regard. We, we do USDA loans into the program. Um, they all come with their own nuances, but I think um, as the NMC program has evolved over the years, um, most, you know, these projects have lots of different um, nuances that uh, we can work around. So um, I think just knowing what, what you're going to get. I think the other thing to note here is when you look at kind of 15 to 20 percent of the project costs, uh, it doesn't really make sense to do a new market project below, say, five million dollars or so. So these projects are really for large capital projects. Um, you know, I, I I don't like to say the five million dollar piece up front because I think that scares a lot of community development entities and away from some of this stuff. You know, you don't need to be lending. Um, to you know, twenty million dollars here, ten million dollars there, in order to be kind of have that track record of investing in low-income communities, um, you can still uh, apply for the new market tax credit allocation and really seek that out, and it can be a capital source for your community development entity. Um, so some project benefits beyond getting that capital piece, you know, and so as we talk about capital pieces, you know, you think twenty percent of a ten million dollar project, you can kind of do the math on kind of what the ultimate benefit is. You know, I think the decrease from 30% um, to 20% is usually legal costs and accounting costs and all sorts of different things uh, that go into um, making these uh, uh, projects happen. So some other benefits, you'll see that the ultimate loans are subordinated to other lenders that you might have. You got low, low interest rates. Um, the terms are seven years, which is the NMTC compliance period and a portion of the new market investment uh, may not have been repaid. So um, it's uh, it's very, uh, very strong financing for a seven year period, especially in today's uh, rate environment. All right, so on to the next one. Um, so kind of where do you see yourself? I've thrown a lot, a lot of stuff at you guys here. Um, and perhaps the answer is none of the above right now. Um, but you know, do you know of a project looking for additional capital? Could that project qualify in a, in a low income census tract? Or do you know uh, one that's going on that provides significant community benefits? Perhaps those projects could qualify for this subsidy. You know, perhaps you fall in the project in borrower field. You know, even if you just aren't aren't looking right now for capital, maybe you know of projects that you think could apply for something like this. Or are you a community organization and you've got, you know, you've got a small track record of the last couple of years, of, you know, getting investments into low income communities and you're really looking to kind of uh, find a new way to capitalize your business and, and provide those benefits to your community. I think, you know, you could potentially be a community development entity or lender. And I think the one thing I, um, I had as, um, I ask every CDFI fund that I run into is, you know, have you have you looked into new market tax credits? You know, I think a lot of people in the CDFI fund space look at it and, you know, they're doing the lending, they're doing the great work, um, but maybe their their projects aren't that big, you know, so they stay away. Or maybe they think the compliance and, and asset management is too diff difficult. So they, they just don't have the resources necessary to commit to the new market program. Um, and so I think that's a lot of where uh, you can find advisors and help too. Uh, really boost up your team and boost your program. Um, perhaps your your local exp expertise is what the CDFI fund is looking for, and if you know if that's if you think that might be the case, I'd love to talk to you about where where that where that could lead for you. Um, investors, you know, so anybody, any of the bank clients out there, any of the um, financial services people, you know, looking to offset tax liability, or perhaps you have Community Rest Reinvestment Act requirements that you're struggling with. Um, you know, you can you can invest in these programs without applying for allocation, without really getting 
super into the weeds and um, you can drive demonstrable community impacts in your communities. Um, and, you know, I think it's really a great win-win for, for everybody. So if, if you are a financial institution and you've got that tax liability, or perhaps you haven't thought much about new markets, um, I would encourage you to, to spend some time thinking about where you could, you know, maybe play a role. Because I think the more allocation uh, we see, the better better results we're going to get in your community communities. So, um, so this is actually our next polling question: um, Where do you see uh, new market tax credits kind of potentially fitting in for your organization? Um, and perhaps it is other. Uh, you know, perhaps it's none. I think um, a lot of people are on this call to learn learn more, but. Um, Maybe just having that background is is all that's needed right now. So um, thank you all. And uh, with that, I'll kind of scoot it back over to Laurel to uh, wrap us up for the day. Um, but would love any sort of questions anybody has as well. Thank you, Jason. And thank you, Sean. I think we've covered a lot of great topics today. Um, we'll give you guys a minute to finish polling question three. And we've got one more at the end. So don't worry if you have not seen all of them. Please answer this one. If you're a project looking for capital, you're a CDE lender or an investor or other, please feel free to answer that. And if you have the other answer, you can put that in the chat. But you do have to answer this polling question in order to get uh, credit. So put, put an answer here. And if, you, if none of those apply to you. Great. The, looks like we were ready for the results. So a lot of you are here either looking for capital. And if you're looking for capital, um, please take a look at our project finance um, presentation. We've done two of those, one last summer and one this summer about what is a good Qualic B, uh, what makes a good Qualic B great, what is sort of interesting for funders at this point. So there's a couple other resources out there. If you're looking for capital as a CDE or other, then that is um, uh, another session we're going to have in another month is um, a session about making CDEs great as well. So let's um, move on from that and talk about the support. So um, let me just step back and sort of recap. So I think one of the most important things is to sort of write things down to start um, really holding yourself accountable. So if you've started with a plan or if you're not quite there yet, start by writing it down. People talk about writer's block and uh, making sure that they, you know, sort of capture everything and wanting it to be perfect, but don't worry about perfection. Worry about just getting something started. So put the plan down on page. One of the things that I um, got as feedback early on in my career when I was um, running a CDE was if you care about it, measure it. Because if you don't measure, how will you know whether you have achieved a success? And so that's the second step. So put a plan down, think about where you are, where you want to go, and then think about those metrics. How will you know you've achieved the plan? And those are the kinds of things that help you think about implementation as well. So again, write it down, take a baseline, take an assessment of where you are, think about those um, uh, benchmarks, think about what will define success for you. And then last uh, part of the beginning is really to jump, right? Just to start. You can't uh, be held um, powerless by by the, the idea that you will do it wrong. You just have to go ahead and take that leap of faith. Um, and the wonderful part of it is that it's an iterative loop. So you can be um, getting started and not exactly know whether you're going in the right direction. But as long as you've taken that assessment and baseline, you can then come back and check on yourself. So set a timeline. Uh, nobody ever wants to take time out of their day when they're busy and doing everything to sort of look at where they've been and whether they've achieved what they wanted. But it's important, set that timeline up on your calendar, put it there, schedule it, make sure that you go back and check. Did I achieve success? Where am I achieving success? What am I doing that's great, but I didn't know I was going to achieve that? Do I want to keep doing that? Do I want to really retool and rethink? So those are some of the things you have to, to do when taking your strategic plan, taking it off the page and starting the implementation. This last part is really about, well, do you have the tools you need? And so that is really where we can help you if you need that help or where other people in the community can 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 be of assistance to you. So if you don't really have the tools, you don't know how to start raising capital, You these CDFI programs sound wonderful, but you don't know how to uh, fill out an application. We are here to help you. And there are other organizations that can do that as well, where they can help you assess where you are, look at where you could receive capital to help you with your plan. Hey, I've got some money and I just don't know how to 
underwrite properly to make sure I'm I'm assessing all the risks. I don't know how to get that money into the community once I've raised it. Um, those are things that also can be of assistance. So we have this sort of uh, full ecosystem of services where we'll take you from any place in this uh, diagram and take you to the next step and then keep going on that iterative loop. So if you need to raise capital, you want to help have help deploying capital, or you have it already deployed, and gosh, people keep asking you questions, and you don't know what the answers to those are, Jason and his team can help you with that compliance piece as well. So um, there's a lot of other services we provide at Cherry Becker. This is a, really a focus and a deep dive into strategic financing solutions. And one of the things I like to just highlight is that we don't have time to talk about sometimes the great successes and the wonderful pieces of the work we do. But this is sort of um, where we have been in the last few years. In the last few years, we've done hundreds of investments from Alaska to Puerto Rico as a team, um, working with a variety of community development entities, CDFIs, QualiFBs, banks, other institutions to try to get work done um, and to try to create benefit into the low-income community. So we've we've gotten a lot of allocations. We've helped deploy those allocations and we're managing those allocations, but it's really about the people we serve. So creating those jobs, you know, 20, 28,000 jobs, uh, you know, 684,000 services provided that weren't there otherwise uh, before this was, was um, happening. These are the kinds of things that get us up and excited. So it's not just about a plan uh, for for no purpose. The plan is is really in seeing the faces of the people and the lives that have changed because of the work that's being done. So those are the kinds of wonderful things that we get to focus on as a team. Um, as I've mentioned a couple times, there are some sessions from last year and some sessions from this year. Those are all available on YouTube. If you get into one of them and you think to yourself, they didn't answer a question I have, we're here to help you with that as well. We're happy to answer questions, set up a follow up call. Um, and frankly, this is really for you. So if you want us to have reach back out to you, go ahead and answer that for polling question number four. We've reached our 50 minutes today. So this is your last one. Um, let us know if you want us to reach out to you. Maybe if you're, you're still thinking about whether this is right for you, answer that as well. And no, frankly, um, this is okay if you came for CPE and we delivered upon that goal and objective for you. Great. Maybe this has sparked some ideas for you for the future and you will know how to reach us if you want to in the future. So this one is a, a short one and we will um, hopefully have everybody answering that one. And I'm going to take a look just real quickly at the chat before we sign off. Um, for those of you that have had issues with uh, polling questions, um, I, I've seen a couple of questions about that over the time. Uh, I think um, the, the the staff and folks have tried to help you with that. And if you haven't been able to successfully get those CPE, um, you should be getting certificates in the mail and or sorry, in the email in about a week or so. And if you don't get that, um, just take a note that you've sent a question and, and follow up uh, with an email to the team. Um, I will end on the contacts. Um, as I said, please feel free to um, email any of us if you have questions. And we've really enjoyed spending part of our day with you. Um, this is something that we're very passionate about. So we're happy to always talk. Please reach out to us. And if nothing else, hope you enjoyed your hour with us and uh, your CPE and have a great afternoon. Mm -hmm.